Hello and greetings to you from where I am, which is in Hollyhead, to wherever you are, wherever you're watching this video and whenever you're watching it. It's now, today is the uh, Thursday, the 10th of September, and this weekend will be the 26th week since we have been able to have Mass here on Anglesey. Um, but the good news is there's a glimmer of hope because yesterday here in Holyhead, Wednesday, we had our first Mass. Uh, we had a gathering of about 35 plus people in the church. Um, normally we'd have maybe 20 at a normal Wednesday Mass, but we had about 35 people plus, and it was great. It really was. Suitably distance and all the precautions were taken. But uh, our first Mass, and it was a joyful occasion, although it was very short, as the regulations are. We had that Mass, as I say, yesterday. We have another one tomorrow, Friday. So we're going to be doing it twice a week um, for the foreseeable future. And the good news, too, for the community in Bentleck is that they are able now, uh, they've got their volunteers, people um, volunteering their services, for stewarding, etc. They've got a mass next Wednesday and start the starting off there, which is good news for that community in Bentleg. Uh, Clangefney too community is, is preparing for the opening of mass um, sometime soon during the week, but we don't know when yet. That's still to be worked out. Sadly, for the other four communities, um, it's not possible at the moment due to restrictions on movement in churches and going in one way and coming out the other, and so on and so forth. But we hope that someday, soon, sooner rather than later, we will be able to celebrate Mass on a Sunday, on a Saturday night and Sunday, uh, so we can come together for the pinnacle of our liturgy, which is hearing the Word of God and receiving the Lord and Holy Communion, all at the one service of Mass under the one roof in our various churches. Hopefully, that will come soon. But another piece of good news is the service of Word that takes place every third week um, by Zoom. There's a gathering of people from all over the island and beyond who come together to pray a service of the Word. And the great thing about it is it's done by the parishioners, it's done by you uh, who volunteer and who are asked maybe to read this or to read this prayer or to lead us in a hymn, etc. Um, it's wonderful, it really is, very tastefully, very um, uh, joyfully done. Uh, and it's done by, it's not by Father Joe or myself, we don't organise anything. It's done by parishioners. We do attend it um, and joyfully do so as well, I'm glad to be there, but we can't take any credit for it. It's organised, planned, prepared and executed by parishioners. And I urge you, if you've not joined in so far, you might like to join in. It really is nice. Saturday night, six o'clock for about 40 minutes. And how to join is on our newsletter and on our website. And it's very easy to join as well. There's, there's nothing. If I can do it, put it that way, then I know you can as well. Um, another piece of good news from the Oblate world is that uh, normally in September there'd be a pilgrimage to Lourdes, which many of you I know have been on over many years. Uh, this year it can't take place, obviously. But there is a virtual pilgrimage to Lourdes uh, this year, organised by the Oblates uh, and all the lay people who are involved in the normal pilgrimage. And it's on the 19th to the 23rd of this month. I think it's um, it, yeah, 19th to the 23rd. And again, it's on the newsletter, it's on the website about how to join that over those number of days to join in with a, a, a pilgrimage to Lourdes. Well, that's good news as well. All these things that are happening, you know, are really, they, they, they may be quite small, especially here in Anglesey, but they are the seeds of good news, which we hope will grow and grow. I'm aware in my mind of uh, two items of news, amongst many items of news, two items of news that are in my mind at the moment because they are just fresh and relevant. 
One of them is the awful tragedy on the island of Lesbos in Greece, where there was a fire or fires in the refugee camp there. And 13,000 people have had to rush away from it, get away from it. And in the process, their tents, their meagre possessions, their tents and any possessions they've had have been wiped out and they've had to move because of this fire. I know things can be bad for us in Britain with this COVID-19, and they are for many people. I admit there's tragedies going on. But overall, for an awful lot of us, you know, it's not really that bad when you compare it to what those people on Lesbos and other places too have to put up with. And even another thing is the self-distancing that they're unable to attain and the danger that they catch or transmit the virus itself. It's a tragedy, but like a lot of these things, as long as it happens over there, wherever, wherever over there is, then it'll soon go from our news bulletins and even from our own minds. But maybe today we could pause for a moment and somehow ask God's help for them at this amazingly difficult time. The other piece of good news, or not good news actually, I don't think it is anyway, is uh, what's happening as I speak in Westminster, the mother of parliament, the so-called mother of parliament. We have a situation where our government has been accused by many learned and knowledgeable people, and some of them, many of them in the House of Lords and the House of Commons, who are saying that the government is breaking international law and causing distrust among nations. It's breaking the letter, the spirit, and the timing of the law, which is set up by the EU negotiations, which Britain signed up to freely to protect the Northern Ireland Protocol. I think it's sad and a disgrace, actually, these things are happening. But I, may, I better not say too much because I might be revealing my colours. Um, that saltire over my shoulder might give an indication of some of the things I feel about all that. But I'm not going to go on about it. I just think it's shoddy and tawdry. I really do. We're very much aware, too, of, um, as always, our friends and relations who are sick and are troubled at this time. Many physically sick, some mentally, anxiety, depression. It's an awful time for them, for you who are one of those persons. And again, our prayers as a community, as our faith community on Anglesey, we, we remember you. Many of the names are in our newsletters, our newsletter, um, many aren't, but we include them all. We include you all in our prayers and God's Holy Spirit, the Comforter, may be with you at a time that can be very difficult. And for those who have died, we pray for them too, that they may rest in peace. So I want to finish by reading a prayer that we have published on this week's newsletter, uh, or it went out with the, the um, email uh, that went with the newsletter. And this is the prayer that comes from Chester Cathedral. Um, it's one of eight prayers. We used one last week, and I'm using this one this week. So I'd like to pray that as I conclude this little video. Here it is. It's a prayer for the world, and the context is Psalm 27, chapter 14, where it says, Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. And this is the prayer. God of love and hope, you made the world and care for all creation, but the world feels strange right now. The news is full of stories about coronavirus and conflicts across the globe. Many are worried about their health, friends and family. Others are anxious about their future, finances and jobs. Lead us through these anxious times and help us to know you are still with us. Help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. Through Jesus Christ, our Shepherd and Saviour. Amen. And it ends. Pray for everyone affected by COVID-19 throughout the world and for our future. 
So there we are. Thank you very much for watching. And as Father Joe ended last week, keep well, keep safe, and hope it's not too long before I see you again. Okay? All the best. Bye-bye.